the snow in my heart into the city all the time keeps running away from me to me how I have to begin and again give me ten the Late Night News, brought to you by Hyundai's Super Sonata Runout on now. And Telstra Mobile Net Digital, further and further and further in front. Heading the Late Night News, an outpouring of grief as the nation mourns the victims of the Black Hawk tragedy. These men, both SAS and air crew, were going into the flames, cutting people out, and bringing them out. Tax rise warnings as state leaders accept lower Commonwealth payments. And good news for homeowners as the interest rate war intensifies. The Late Night News with Tracy Spicer. Good evening. We begin tonight with one of the heroes of the Black Hawk disaster. For the first time, the pilot of the doomed helicopter that was hit has told what happened. He struggled to control his stricken machine, bringing it down softly enough to save the lives of eight of the 14 soldiers on board. This was the first eyewitness account of the tragedy. You think that you're gone, but you do your best right to the end, and somehow we got out of it. Captain David Burke was flying the Black Hawk that had its tail sliced off in the collision. He fought to maintain control as the helicopter went into a spin, his heroism saving eight of the 14 soldiers on board. Both aircraft exploded in mid-air. Uh, theirs obviously very severely, ours was just on fire. Uh, I d then just went into the normal drills and I knew that the only way we would survive is to land in an upright position. It was the Black Hawk that saved them, he said. The helicopter designed to maximise the chance of surviving crashes like this one. As soon as we were literally on the deck, the safety staff on the ground were there. They had medics there. They were organising it. They were pulling people out. There were people going into the flames of aircraft to pull them out. There were rounds going off. You know, there was ammunition flying in the air. There were explosives in the back of the aircraft that were going off. There were aircraft exploding. And these men, both SAS and air crew, were going into the flames and cutting people out and bringing them out. David Burke revealed one of his crewmen had died rushing into the flames to try and save his comrades. We are a very, very strong unit. We've, we've got a great... We feel like we're a family. There's a great spirit. We all have pride and trust in each other. It was this camaraderie and the dangers encountered by the SAS commandos that left their own families realising that a soldier's work came first and they came second. Gay Toms lost her husband Brett in the tragedy, her grief compounded by the knowledge he was about to leave the army to spend more time with his children, three-year-old Giveny and five-year-old Joshua. I explained it to him. I said to him that Daddy has had an accident and that he's now gone to heaven. He cried and, and said, now I haven't got a Daddy anymore. Now we can't go to Daddy's work. Who's going to help me climb the mountains? Mrs Tom said she'd had a premonition that on this mission, something might go wrong. I'd had very bad feelings the day before he left, extremely bad feelings. And I said to him before he left, I said, I just don't want you to go anymore. I just, I don't want to be alone anymore. I've had enough. And he said to me, that's OK, this is it, you know. We're on the home run. This is our last, last time and then we can follow our dream. And in Townsville today, a heart-wrenching memorial service for the victims of the Black Hawk disaster. More than 2,000 people have paid their respects to the 18 who died. A blanket of grey cloud covered Townsville, a fitting backdrop for the sombre mood. Governor-General Sir William Dean and Australia's military chiefs led the first memorial service to the victims of Wednesday night's air disaster. The families of the dead comforted by army personnel. For many, the pain of losing their loved ones was too much to bear. Also amongst the 2,000-strong congregation, three soldiers from the Special Air Service who had left their hospital beds to attend the service and pay tribute to their mates. 18 Steyr rifles were placed in the ground in front of the Anzac Memorial. The blue and sand berets from the dead men's regiments were draped over the weapons. 
May they be true examples to us of dedication and service, and may the love and care in which we hold them never fade. The Governor General read from the, the Book of Wisdom the message touching home. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Defence Forces Chief General John Baker extended his deepest sympathy to the families of the victims, promising the soldiers would never be forgotten. But when tragedy occurs, not in operations, but in training, the hurt is all the deeper. A bugler played the last post as family members and other dignitaries were invited to lay wreaths under the weapons. For some, the pain and reminder of the crash was too much. <coughs> But three-year-old Benjamin Berrigan is still too young to understand the pain of losing his father, John, in the crash. Tony Fabris in Townsville, 10 News. The Army has established a national grief counselling telephone service for the relatives and friends of those involved. The number is 1800 680 202. In other news, taxes may rise in several states after the annual Premier's conference ended in Canberra today. Following two days of bitter argument, the states accepted they'll get less money from the federal government, but forced John Howard into an embarrassing back down on sales tax. The trip in the lift down to the Prime Minister's office illustrated what happened to the Premiers. All in together against the federal government, but they ended up financially squeezed. We regard the bottom line outcome as more than satisfactory. The states lost around a billion and a half dollars, meaning taxes may have to rise or services could be cut to make up the difference. We don't rule anything out. We've got to pay for this. This is a billion dollars. This is nearly a billion dollars clawed out of the, the budget of New South Wales. I haven't ruled anything out, uh, but what I'm saying is it is our preference not to impose a further tax. It is going to make a, a tough budget for Queensland. Uh, that bit tougher and uh, certainly we will have to be looking at uh, at revenue options. Others will try to make do with the money they've got. We believe across government we will be able to find the savings so that we will not have to pass this on in the further taxes and charges. The ACT, smallest of them all, is biting back. From now on the Commonwealth has to accept in the ACT they have to pay their own way. That means we'll be looking at such issues as uh, parking, the federal government paid a high political price for its money, being forced to withdraw most of its sales tax grab on the states, who heaped humiliation on the architect of that plan, Treasurer Peter Costello. It was a ploy, a devious, deceptive, dishonest ploy by a very sleazy treasurer. I